Hey there CNCer, Scott here from CNC Labs, back today to talk about something for your shop. Uh, look, we've all had a run-in where we are, you know, doing a project and our spinning router bit either got too close or actually came in contact with the clamp and snapped your bit off. Um, you know, most of them aren't too expensive, but you know, I also don't like running around snapping bits just for fun. So we created some pre-made files for you so that you can make your own wooden clamps. So when, you know, the terrible scenario that you run your router into it, at least your bit should survive. And if you're really lucky, you can use that bit to cut out some more wooden clamps. Um, the beauty of it is that, yes, we have created the files. All you'll have to do is download the files, open them in G-Sender, run them in G-Sender, set up your material, and you've got yourself a whole bunch of handy dandy work holdings that are less likely to cause you stress when you run your router into them by accident. Um, we have made these out of three eighths or half inch plywood for my super Canadian friends, which I probably should be one of. It's 9.5 ish millimeters or 12.7 millimeters. Um, if, the really awesome part about this is you don't need to have a full four by eight sheet of plywood laying around to do this. These, I made all of these out of scrap pieces I had laying around the shop from odd jobs here and there. Um, it's probably why <laughs> most of us woodworkers are hoarders because you never know when you're gonna need it. Uh, they were, uh, sorry, the files have been set up to cut with a uh, 1 8 inch end mill. You can probably use a compression bit too. I didn't experiment with them, but maybe I will. Compression bits are known for giving you a clean cut on top and bottom and can, uh, considering we're going to be cutting right through the material with this, compression bits are probably also uh, useful. And last but not least, if you want to explore further the design of these um, you know, tweak them, make them your own. I've taken a few of these clamps and made them a little bit longer. Uh, we're also going to include links to the Onshape um, software, I guess. It's an online software. You can go and modify what we've given you as an open source file. So uh, if, you, if you feel the need and you feel the fancy to go and find out a little bit more and tinker, we're going to give you that. If you just want the files and you just want to cut them out and be done, we're going to give you those too. Uh, so that's about it for this one. I'm not going to talk as much as I usually do. I'm going to get some plywood set up. I'm going to get my files loaded up and then I'm just going to fire through some video of me cutting these out. Stay tuned. Okie dokie. So I'm going to try and give you just a little background on um, basically how the files were created so that you can, you know, know what happened going forward. Uh, it started in Onshape. I exported the parts from Onshape to a DXF file. Um, I'm going to include those in the links so you can download those if you want to mess around with them or, you know, make your own layouts. Uh, from the DXF being imported into Vectric, that's where you'll see, you know, what's going on here where I've created a bunch of files. One of them is one big file that has all of the clamps in it and multiples of some because you'll probably need more than one. And uh, the other files are the individual clamps on their own. So if you don't have a great big chunk like I'm going to work on today, um, then you know you can break it down into smaller files and use those scraps like I was talking about earlier. Um, boop, 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 boop. In Vectric, which again, I'm not including this file, but I will include G code. So you can open that and run it or you can import your own DXF. You can play with that. Um, the way I've got the G code files set up is that they will do the inner paths first, which are all these pink dotted lines, uh, these couple little bolt head ones for the different uh, style knobs, and then the outer parts, all of those guys. Um, and with those outer ones, there's going to be tabs everywhere to try and hold them in place. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've done a couple of rounds of these clamps. Some of them, you know, came out and got exploded or, you know, chopped the bits by the router. It happens, that's why they're made out of wood. From there, uh, if you are going to make your own and you're importing your own DXF uh, into Vectric or whatever software you're using, just make sure you leave enough space around whatever you're carving out for either screws or clamps, whatever work holding, ironically enough, so that when your router's going around and cutting these things out, it's not bumping into them. I won't lie, that's already happened to me a few times and it's gotten me a little frustrated for how simple this should be. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. After you download and create whatever file you're using, you can run over to G-Center. This is again, the giant file that I've loaded up here. Get your material, whatever thickness that you're using for plywood on your, on your table. I typically put down an eighth of an eighth of an inch spacer just to make sure I don't destroy my wasteboard completely. 
that's what it's there for, but the longer it lasts, the longer I don't have to replace it. So let's try and keep it pretty. From there, like I said, once you've got your file loaded in G-Sender, you'll zero out your router, you'll throw on your dust shoe and your dust collection if you've got it. I will be leaving mine off for this video just so you can see this thing as it's carving, otherwise, you know, it's not as much fun. It does make a pretty big mess, so if you got a dust shoe, use it. Uh, last but not least, I think once it's done carving everything out, I'll probably just do like a time lapse video of me putting it all together because it's pretty simple. We tried to make it simple, we tried to make it fun. We basically, you know, we're giving you the files, all you gotta do is supply the machine in the wood and have a good time with it. So I'm gonna let this thing rip. I'm going to cut everything out and then I'm not sure what I'm doing next, so we'll have to find out. Check it out. So, even though I gave you that friendly reminder to watch out for your clamps and your work holding, I still didn't do it right. So, um, yeah, as you can see while this is carving that I didn't, for some reason, square up my piece of material properly or I didn't actually set it up. So it carved pretty close to the edge. I may have had to stick my hands in there a few times and get a little hairy and <laughs> move some of them back to make sure it didn't rip them off. Um, you know. All things being what they are, it worked out, everything carved, um, nothing popped out and exploded like I talked about, my tabs did their job. So uh, now it's time to let this thing finish up and put them together, sand them down, and then put them to use. Alrighty folks, we have all of our pieces cut out, sanded, and arranged on our bench. We have three different types of clamps. We have the basic hold down, the angle, I'm calling it the goalie stick, and the toe clamp. Uh, I'm going to give you a really quick rundown on how to put them together. They're pretty simple, but just to, you know, clear up any confusion, uh, you should have most of the parts already. Um, T-bolts, you should have some of those laying around from other, other clamps. If you don't, you know, you're going to have to buy them. Do do. We're gonna need some washers. Those go with your bolts. And last but not least, you will need some of these little five millimeter threaded inserts. Those are gonna be pretty handy. I'm gonna show you how they go. So the first thing we're gonna do is take care of this basic work holding. We're gonna grab the this guy. I don't have a nickname for him yet. Maybe this is the tongue actually. That's the tongue. We're gonna grab a Pac-Man. Num num. We're gonna slide it on. And whoop. Throw it around and slide it on. Make sure that you have the small sides in the same spot and the big sides in the same spot. That's so you can use it this way or this way. Something I didn't mention, it's gonna be a factor or could be a factor for you is, depending on how true to the actual thickness your plywood is, is going to depend on how nicely these all fit together. My plywood was just a little bit under an actual half an inch. So in on shape, when I punched in the variable for how thick my wood was, I put a half an inch. Well, it's not quite half an inch, so mine slide together really easily. Good sometimes, not so good other times. So if you are finding that you want to be really accurate and you want your pieces to fit together, measure them with calipers, punch that into on shape in the variable, save your files out. If you're running with R's, you're going to find that they go together a little bit easier because I may have rounded up a little bit and, you know, makes life easier. If they are fitting together tighter, you know, give them a whack, use a mallet. You're not gonna hurt anything. And if you do happen to break one, you've got lots of scrap laying around, you can make some more. Next, with this basic work holding, we're gonna grab what I call the threaded knob in the individual file. 
and a threaded insert, ironically enough. And we're going to drop some more things. You're going to grab your Allen key and insert and just start twisting. Twist the wood, twist the Allen key, twist them both. Play twister. It's not going to be the same fun. Here we go. Eventually it will stop twisting and you will have yourself a threaded knob. From there, you grab a T-bolt, slide it up through the tongue. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah, there we go. And we're gonna grab a washer, slide over top. Uh, another little hint I found that the way that you twist these guys, the threaded inserts into the knobs, I am apparently a gorilla. And when I tighten these down, uh, I've noticed that if you tighten them right side up, the wood can actually loosen when you're loosening them. If you use them upside down, you're tightening them more and the wood doesn't tend to loosen. You probably don't need to crank down on the way I do, but again, a bit of a gorilla. I want to make sure my stuff doesn't move. I digress. <laughs> so we put that guy on upside down or right side up, whichever you prefer. Grab your work, use your tongue, do, 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 and ta-da. Phase one of our work holding. Phase two. I'll leave that guy there so we can see it. Uh, I'm going to skip over to the hockey stick. You'll see why after. The hockey stick already has three, or you can use four threaded inserts on it. I didn't figure you guys needed me to go through that again. So you slide them in there. And look at this, I got the other one in the way. Look at me go. So you're gonna tighten these down. If you want this to be square, to your workpiece, make sure you grab your speed square and square it to your table and your T-tracks and everything. If you don't care, because it's just a demonstration like I am right now, just tighten it down where it is. You will now see that when your piece is in there, you get your nice square here. That's why it's probably important to be square to your table or to your CNC and making sure that everything's good because what's the point in using this one if you're not gonna be square? Last but not least is the toe clamp. We're going to grab all of our pieces that I just shoved off to the side. Ooh, pretty simple assembly. The first thing we're going to do is grab the crown, as I'm calling it, because it looks like a crown, and every crown needs to have some jewels. So you're going to grab another threaded insert, pop it in there. It does not matter which side you put this on, it is universal fit, and you start twisting. I've clearly done this like six times because I keep on making mistakes. There we go. Crown with our jewel. From there, we are going to grab one of the sides. There's two of these, one for each side, ironically enough. You're going to take the toe, this guy, and we are going to, I, I keep doing this backwards to me, but maybe forwards to you guys. Anyway, da-da, in there, pretty simple. Again, because my plywood is a little bit off the actual size, a little thinner, it slides really easily. Not the end of the world. Grab your other side, uh, put it on the other side of the toe. So you should kind of have this kind of look and this thing can kind of slide back forth. The next thing you're going to need is the Luke Skywalker spaceship. It is going to slide in just like that. Easy peasy. Again, for my 3 8 versions of these that I did on my own, I had to use a little bit of force to punch it in there. That's all. Then you're going to grab your castle and you're going to grab the rest of your assembly, which is right here. And I'm trying to see a good angle. There we go. We're going to take this and we're going to slot it up in there. Do, do, do. Get in there. You will see that in the hole on the top, it's going to lock in as well. Right there. Do, do. It's now locked in place. Good to go. This can slide. That's what's going to put the pressure on. We're going to grab a... I'm going to go to this camera because it shows the detail a little better. We're going to grab a non-threaded because we are not using a threaded insert. It just has the bolt head cut out. And you're gonna grab a bolt and you're gonna just slide it in like that. And you will see that if my fingers aren't in the way that that will actually go almost flush. Cool. Then all you need is a nut to thread on there. Just keeps it from popping out on you. Tighten down just a little bit, and that non-threaded one is going to go into the castle. Oop, give it a little twist, and you can see, oh, this might take a little while. Can we actually get in there and see it? Let's see. 
Do, do, do. Come on, baby. There it is. Starts to come through. There we go. And because I knew I was going to need this to show this off, because this is the beauty of the toe clamp, put our piece back in place. I already have a T-bolt sitting right here. We're going to go through the toe, through the top of the clamp. We're going to throw a washer on top. Another threaded knob. We're going to just spin it on there. So, again, our work can't move this way, but it can still move this way. So, when we push our toe clamp up to it, Come on, cooperate. There we go. Okay, you're just gonna fit it on there. Kind of nice. A little bit of room is okay, because that's the whole point of this guy. You're gonna tighten down on top. That keeps your clamp from moving, right? Your clamp doesn't move, and then you're gonna tighten it. See how my wood's moving? There we go. Give it a little crank, and now we're holding complete. Three clamps, super useful, super easy to make, repeatable, destroyable, without destroying your bits. Um, pretty awesome, if I'm being honest. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything you wanna see, let us know in the comments below. Share your projects with us. We've got more cool content coming out all the time. There's a game on the horizon for the next video, I think. And um, yeah, I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you around the CNC.